Okay, we got a bleed effect on her. Um, you can see the blood squirting out, and you can see her health bar go down, which is really nice. So let's save the durability on our knife and let the bleeding take her down. I don't know if it's going to kill her, but it's going to take her way down. Come on, bleed out, Nurse Nancy. Okay, we're going to have to hit her once more. Hello everybody, I'm an old guy gaming and we're going to start a new series here on 7 Days to Die playing Subquake's Undead Legacy. Uh, so this playthrough is <coughs> excuse me, going to be uh, a little bit different than the usual. Um, first of all, of course, we have uh, the overhaul itself that we're going to play and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what Undead Legacy does with the game here in a minute. Uh, but also we're going to play more on a, 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 a what, what, what we'll call like a, a city themed map. So I have created in Nitrogen an 8K map that's loaded with mega cities. So think of it kind of more as almost a metropolitan area. And so I've always wanted to do this uh, or have been wanting to do this for a long time, basically play on an all city map or as close to as an all city map as we can possibly get with nitrogen. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, the gameplay is going to be uh, for this series a little more, you know, it's gonna be kind of, at least for me, kind of getting back to the roots uh, of the originality of Seven Days to Die. And what that means for me is a few different things. Basically, it means, uh, first and foremost, that you can't be out at night. It's too dangerous to be out at night. So when I originally played Seven Days to Die back in, you know, starting with Alpha 6 or 7 or whatever it was, you know, at that time, you did not want to be out at night. You just didn't. Um, and, you know, I played that way for a, a long time on Seven Days to Die until Alpha 16, where I started playing it on Insane Difficulty, and uh and nightmare speed at that time it was just called always run and really um enjoyed the challenge of that and have pretty much played the game at least the vanilla game uh, ever since then on those settings uh, but the kind of downside to that is it makes it uh, it makes nighttime less uh, significant so because you know the zombies are already running anyways so it's not really that much different going out at night than it is in the daytime and so you kind of get used to it and you just go out and do whatever you want to no matter what time of day it is and I kind of miss that, you know, about the game, that that urgency that you have to be in at night and hunker down somewhere because it's too dangerous to be out. And so the way that I'm going to make that happen uh, here is that I'm going to have a small horde of eight zombies uh, come after me uh, on nights one through six. And then on the seventh day, what we'll do is we'll go into the settings and we'll jump uh, the Blood Moon Horn up to, you know, uh, we'll try 64 enemies and we'll see how the computer does. If not, we'll have to jump it down to 32. Um, so that's kind of the plan for the series. Um, some other things for getting back to the original is that I'm not going to have any traders on this map and I'm not going to do any questing and we're not going to have any airdrops, even though airdrops actually was part of the original game. Um, uh, you know, that, you know, Seven Days to Die has changed significantly over the last couple of alphas in regards to questing and reliance upon the trader. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but uh, I want to get away from all of that stuff and get back to playing this game as a sandbox scavenging game where we're, you know, we're relying only on what we can scavenge, what we can find, what we can craft to advance in the game. And we're not relying upon a trader and we're not relying upon quests to give us money and prizes and XP and that sort of thing. So again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, I do enjoy playing the game like that and I have been playing it, but I just want to get back to those original uh, routes there. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the map really quick. Um, I'm going to bring it up on the screen here. So this is the map that uh, I generated in... Uh, nitrogen, I, I tried a few different, you know, I had nitrogen try and generate several different types of maps, uh, all with, you know, the similar settings. And this is the one that I decided upon. So if you look at the map, all of these light blue clusters, these are mega cities. So those are skyscrapers and large buildings in tight city blocks. And, you know, it doesn't look 
real significant when you look at the map but these are this is a very large area so when you're in this area you feel like you're in a downtown and we have several of these scattered throughout the map so this whole map collectively you know think of it as a metropolitan area uh, even an island um, a metropolitan area on an island because that's essentially what it is uh, in addition to that we have uh, all of the different biomes represented here so we got desert in the tan colored biome uh, snow in the white colored biome the the grayer biomes are wasteland the dark uh, or the browner biomes are uh, burnt biome and of course we have the forest biome too um and then the lines that you see going through the map those are interstates so those are like big freeways that go you know run north and south and east and west uh, on the map i added those more for immersion because it really you know they're all kind of broken down in in, in different chunks and it kind of has more like almost a you know a fallout 4 type of feel to it an apocalyptic ruined world feel to it and it just adds to the flavor of the environment i think to have uh, those interstates there uh, so we added i added that into two um they don't really serve any super practical purpose other than that you know they're there and it, it just like i said it, it just adds to the aesthetics of the whole environment uh in addition to that i have roads set to um in bad shape overgrown because i think that's going to be more appropriate for an apocalyptic uh, apocalyptic environment I mean, you're not going to have people, uh, you know, fixing up the roads and making everything, you know, maintaining that in this environment. In fact, we are, because we don't have any traders and there's no bandits or anything like that in this mod, we are the only living human in this entire world. It's us by ourselves against the zombies. So it's almost kind of like a, you know, a Charlton Heston Omega Man uh, type of feel. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the map off here. And um, I want to get uh, a little bit now into what Undead Legacy itself does really quick. I'll try and mo move through this intro quickly. I know it's a little longer than usual, but um, <clears throat> I just want to set ev everything up for us here. So Undead Legacy is an overhaul that mostly affects the crafting system. It affects the UI. It has a really nice, sleek-looking UI, uh, UI in the game. Um, and it affects crafting and it also adds new items to the game. So it adds new vehicles, it adds uh, new weapons and other equipment um, and changes the way that you craft in the game. That's probably the biggest thing that it changes that I have noticed. Uh, another really important thing that this um, mod does is that it brings back action-based progression. So in other words, you know, the more I use my ax, the better I'm going to get at woodcutting and that sort of thing. And I really like that about survival games and seven days to die actually used to be that way too but that uh, somewhere along the line they changed it uh and that's not a change that i appreciate nor has anybody else i've ever talked to i wish the fun pimps would bring back action-based progression but anyways undead legacy does so that's just another way that we're going to try and get back to our roots here with seven days to die using this wonderful mod so yeah so it changes crafting it changes the ui ui it adds new uh, weapons and items and it adds action-based progression for your skills it does not change at this point in time the zombies um and it doesn't by itself as far as i know change any of the pois so regarding the zombies we are going to be playing with vanilla zombies uh, but i did talk to subquake very briefly on his discord and he seems to imply that he is planning on making changes to the zombies too but he hasn't uh, gotten to that point yet so he's still working on the mod um, regarding the custom POIs, I am also uh, I have also added the compo pack uh, to the map, so we're going to have all of the new buildings of the comp the latest compo pack, which is 46, I think. Um, and that's exciting to me too because I haven't played with the compo pack in quite some time, so there's going to be a lot of new POIs that are even new to me that we'll be able to uh, explore and discover. Okay, I think that's getting pretty much it uh, for my notes and for our intro here. Um, one last thing I want to mention before we jump in and get started is that this is not a permadeath series. Um, we will do our best, of course, to stay alive, but I don't want to play permadeath because the problem with permadeath, of course, as you know, is we can't, you know, if we die, we got to start all over uh, and then start from the very beginning and grind all over. And then if we die, we got to start all over and so on and so forth. And that's not what this playthrough is about. This playthrough is about getting back to the roots of seven days to die, uh, playing it on the hard settings, of course, but you know, if we die, it, we die and we, we just keep going. That's all there is to it. But I will, you know, that being said, I will, of course, um, do everything that I can not to die. Uh, we, we will, you know, we'll fight to the last dying breath, so to speak, uh, and hopefully, you know, minimize any deaths that we that we do have. All right, guys, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get into uh, the game settings. So we're going to click on new game. 
Um, uh, I usually use Hank because he, you know, looks like an old guy. Uh, so we'll just use him. I don't really care about that. Um, and then for the game, um, in my testing earlier, I kind of set this up. But let's go ahead and just put in um, Zombie Metropolis Undead Legacy. Um, yeah, that's good enough. And then this Zombie Metropolis 2 map is the one that I just showed you. Um, on the Undead Legacy tab, you have the option, if you want to, of changing the weight. One of the things that the mod does is it moves you more to a weight-based inventory system rather than a slot-based inventory system. So if you wanted to, you could adjust how much things weigh, either more or less. Uh, we're going to leave everything on the standard. Um, the recipe filter uh, basically shows you what I think the... Um, uh, well, I, I guess, yeah, it tells us what it does here. I haven't really looked closely at this. Standard shows all recipes. Um, per workstation only shows the recipes that you can make in that workstation. And the true survival shows only what you know. Now, I thought about using a true survival because that, now that I think of it, I did look at this earlier. I don't think I'm going to do that only because the mod is brand new to me and I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, how in the hell am I going to do this? Um, so I, I think that's a little bit too much true survival uh, it, for my purposes. So we're going to just leave that all on the standard. One thing we are going to do though is we're going to turn off the block respawn time. Okay, well that basically is, you know, like seven days to dies, uh, you know, respawn items, except for this is based upon blocks. So this is like cars and stuff like that uh, that can respawn. Guys, we, we've got something like 12, 13, 14-ish individual metropolises or I should say downtowns of cities on this map. There is no way we'll ever, ever possibly loot everything by the time this playthrough is over. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to make things more realistic and we're going to turn this off. So once we harvest a car, it's harvested and it is never coming back, just like it would be in a real situation. Basic settings, we are on insane. We're going to play on our usual 90-minute days, 18 uh, hours in the day. Blood Moon frequency is every day um, with eight zombies <clears throat> uh, every you know coming after us every night. And again, the purpose of that is not to have a horde every night for the sake of having a horde every night, but more to force us to stay indoors and hunker down at night like the original game uh, did. Okay, and then let's see. Uh, we don't need a Blood Moon morning because we know we have a Blood Moon every day. Um, and then Nightmare Speed. Everything is set to Nightmare Speed, uh, as you can see there. One thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to gift myself... Uh, an XP multiplier. I wouldn't normally do this, but I've already gone through two very long grinds in Alpha 19, uh, you know, to get up uh, in uh, the end game. And I just don't feel like doing that again. And you guys probably, you know, don't want to watch many, many early episodes of me, you know, trying to get the XP too. So we're going to have the XP come a little faster this time, uh, just so that we can get into the funner stuff more, you know, more quickly and not have such, such a grind to the game. So that's one thing I am going to change. Uh, for this playthrough. Uh, we looked at the advance. Everything else here is pretty much on the same settings or the, the default settings, I should say. Like I said, though, what we'll do is when day seven rolls around, we'll come here into the options and we'll change this to, excuse me, to either 32 or 64 enemies. We'll try 64 at first and see how the computer does performance wise. Uh, but, you know, day seven, day 14, day 21, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to bump this up to a big horde and have that authentic big horde experience. Airdrops are off, um, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the game, and I will meet you guys in-game, and then we'll start this fun adventure. All right, here we are. Okay, welcome to Undead Legacy. You can't recall anything what happened or how you ended up here, but it seems that you have a bug-out bag in your inventory. Place it on the ground and reveal its contents. It might have something useful inside to help you with your survival. Introduction mission will guide you through the basis of gathering and crafting in Undead Legacy. Let resin is gathered from non-dry trees. Nails can be obtained from couches, paintings, doors, and other furniture. Good luck, adventurer. Okay, your mission objective. Active mission status is displayed in the objective tractor, which is up here. Access your inventory to navigate the missions menu. All right, we are going to do the opening missions, so I can get those first four points, by the way, but we're not going to be doing any other quests besides that. Okay, so um, I will just, you know, we'll talk about the mod and how things work as we go along, uh, keeping in mind that, you know, that I haven't played it a whole lot myself. I, I have the general idea uh, of how things work, but we haven't done anything beyond just, you know, the first couple hours. Uh, so basically what we have to do is we have to gather, you know, all the stuff in the upper right hand corner, of course, um, to make our axe. M most of the things that you have, can craft in the game, you have to craft 
though from a workbench of, of various different types. So there's very few things, uh, at least in the way of tools and whatnot, that you can craft uh, in your own inventory. Okay, so we need to find some stones. Let's see if we can look around for that. Now it also you know, wants us to gather rope. We need to use rope for certain things. But we're actually going to be able to do that in our uh, our bug -a bag which we're going to set down after we get all the other stuff. That's not a stone there. Um, and then well, you know one of our number one priorities as soon as possible that we got to do is we have to find some nails because you can't make frames um, without nails. In fact, you can't make frames in your own inventory either, like you can in vanilla game. You have to have a workstation. First of all, and secondly, you have to have nails, and it takes 10 nails for one frame. So frames are very precious now uh, in this game. They're no longer something you can just craft a stack of 100 in like 30 seconds in your own inventory and then go along your merry way. So um, that's a thing. And, of course, you know, we're going to need frames for the usual stuff. We're going to need frames to get up on roofs and up in high places and that sort of thing. Uh, so they're definitely a lot more precious, which I think is really cool. And here again, it's just making things more challenging uh, in a more realistic way. So, all right, where in the hell are all the stones at? We need to find one more stone. I suppose I could punch a boulder if we have to. We're running ourselves out of, out of steam here. All right, well, let's punch a boulder. Well, see, I don't know if that's going to work because um, you have to fully harvest like a tree, for example, before you actually get wood out of it. You don't get little... There's a zombo right over there. You don't get little pieces of wood as you go along. And I'm not sure if that's the case for boulders, too. Oh, look at that. You know what, though? Hmm. We might not... We might not actually equip that just because of the noise factor. we got to stay really quiet. Uh, I am intending, too, by the way, of, make, uh, of doing a stealth... Oh, shit. There's a cheerleader over there. Of doing a stealth build. Okay, so we have um, our, uh, yeah, there's two cheerleaders over there. Okay, we have our stone and our branches. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this um, a bug out bag. And we're going to set that down and open it up. And inside we have some real basic supplies here, amongst which uh, is some rope. Okay, let's go ahead and wear that stuff. Uh, we get a, a really wimpy ass pistol. Um, with with 10 bullets at the very beginning. Um, so uh, another thing about the bedroll, really important, is the bedroll, you can't craft it in your your inventory anymore. You need a tailoring workstation, which means this is the only bedroll we have, and it's so that means it's going to be really precious um, in the early game here until we can make our own bedroll. Okay, so let's get some water down here if we need a, an emergency stamina boost, which we probably will. Uh, we can keep the painkillers up there. I'm going to hang on to this for the moment. Um, but we'll see how things go. Let's go ahead and scrap that into scrap iron since we are going to need some for this next part of the quest anyway. Let's put stones down on our toolbar. Uh, we're going to need to gather those so that we can uh, distract zombos. Okay, so let's craft our first stone axe. And that we can, of course, make in our inventory. Uh, we can make the stone axe in our inventory and we can make the first workstation, which is called the carpenter's table in our inventory because we need those really pretty much to start with everything else. Um, do those sleepers disappear? Shammy stiffs toys. I'm not even going to comment on that any further. Okay, let's uh, open this up. Nothing in it. Now, one thing we can do is we can actually harvest trash bags and use them as containers. So this basically this pile of garbage that we picked up, we can set that back down later and use it as a, as a makeshift container. Okay, so um, now we need to gather wood, uh, resin, and scrap iron. So for resin, what you do is you need to find a, a, a non-dead tree. So in other words, if you were like in the, the burnt biome or the, uh, or the wasteland, you wouldn't be able to get resin. So, um, and notice that I'm using the metal, the, the steel knife that the game gave me. Uh, that is the best tool at least in the early game, for gathering resin. You can get a little resin if you use the stone axe, but uh, not very much. 
Okay, so we got the resin, we need um, some scrap iron, and we need to get some more wood. So the only way we're going to get wood is to cut an actual tree down. I'm a little bit uh, nervous. I think those zombies that we saw over there were all just um, uh, sleeper zombies. Uh, we don't actually have zombies that have spawned in yet. Let's harvest this and get a few more feathers. And uh, we have different kinds of wood, too. We have branches, we have wood... We have planks, we have broken planks, we have scrap wood uh, that are used for different things. So again, just makes the game, you know, and the crafting system more immersive and so forth. Okay, so, oh God, this is going to take a long time. All right, guys, well, I'm just going to time lapse this and sit here and whack on this, um, but we will get a big old uh, bundle of wood once I finally knock it down. All right, one thing um, you'll notice too is I just got a wood cutting tool skill. And we got um, 19 uh, logs or, or wood out of that, which which is quite a bit uh, for one tree. But, man, that took me like 10 million years to do. Uh, but anyway, one of the, another thing I really like about this mod is that, you know, you have skills. And these skills increase as, you, you know, from use. Uh, and I just love that about survival games. And Seven Days and I used to be that way until somebody, who knows, decided uh, to, to, to change it. And... I haven't talked to a single person that I know of um, that likes that change. Everybody likes learn by doing. And so, you know, um, Subquake has brought that back with this mod, and I think that's fantastic. Okay, so um, the last thing we need is some iron. And we also need, we, we have to get some nails. So what I think we're going to do is we might try and sneak in to the apartment building here. Because uh, we have to take apart couches. That seems to be the best way uh, to get nails. Problem is, though, is I don't have any f uh, any blocks that I can get up there, so hmm, that might be a little harder harder than uh, it seems. So, let's see, if we go through the front door, we're going to have to break it down. And I suppose in the process of doing that, we will get a little bit of iron, too, won't we? Let's see what's in here. Oh, nice. Um, those are perception shades. Okay. Uh, we will just put those on and we'll scrap this because we need scrap iron. Um, let's just get some cloth from that thing. Okay, let's just peek around the corner here. Uh, because what I would like to do ideally is is set our, our workbench, our carpenter's bench down in a location where we're, we can actually, you know, hold up for a little while until we get on our feet and get everything that we need. Uh, to get started here so let's um let's just see what happens here we need iron anyway so we're kind of killing two birds with one stone here just hoping we can get into one of the apartments without um you know running into sleepers because i i don't have a lot for weaponry i mean i've got a knife and i got this pistol but oh speaking of which uh, we should probably load this too you think that'd be a good idea I think it's a good idea. So if we can kind of hole up in um in one of the apartments, um, I mean the roof of this place is actually very safe, but we need frames to get up there, at least from the outside. Notice we're getting hinges and broken planks and more nails from the door. Um, all of that stuff is useful for for something. Like, for example, to craft doors, you need hinges. Okay, let's be really quiet going through here. Uh, don't think I'm going to take plastic now. Let's just leave all that there for now. To be really quiet. Okay, so this apartment's open here. Uh, does this door work? It's locked. Okay, because we can't, like I said, we can't just whip out a door in our inventory like we could in vanilla, so you really have to kind of take all that stuff into account. Just go as quiet as possible. Okay, no zombos in there. Hopefully we can find a cooking pot in here, too. Uh, 
Okay, so the living room's clear and we got some couches. All right, I think um, we'll be safe in here for the moment anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and start taking these couches apart to get the nails. It might have been in the other room. See, the problem with this place is we... There's not a whole lot we can do to block it. We could probably put some chairs down, maybe. Yeah, we don't need that. I mean, this would buy us enough time to jump off the balcony. I know this is a uh, really dark, but I don't really I don't have a light. Well, I got this, but I can't uh, hold it while I'm doing other stuff. So I'm wondering if there's a sleeper right on the other side of this wall. Either that or they're right above us in the next floor up. Now we could try and bang on the rails to get the rest of the iron that we need. Um, we could try and bang on this, but that's going to make a hell of a lot of noise. Plus, you know what? We can actually get water from these in this mod, too, so I don't really want to destroy that. We could destroy this. Oh, man, it's going to make a lot of noise. All right, there's our cooking pot. Okay, so this is a schematic. When you scrap schematics in this mod, instead of just getting paper like you do in vanilla, it actually gives you research points. And, you know, blueberry seed is just not a high priority right now, so we're going to go ahead and scrap that, and it'll give us 50 research points, which we're going to need later on uh, to make certain things. Okay. Um, if we have to get out of here in a hurry, let's go ahead and loot the cupboards first before we start banging on this and making a shit ton of noise. All right, there's some beef. Sounds like they're right in here, but they're they got to be in the other other room. I'm thinking. Okay, well, dang, this is gonna be risky. Okay, let's also scrap those for research points. And what we can do is scrap this. Now, what we do here is we can take. I believe these empty bottles or jars and we hit E and it fills up from the faucet, but there was only one charge on that. I'm not a hundred percent possible, but these might recharge over time. I'm not sure. Ooh, I wonder if there's a Zeke in here. This would be a good place for there to be a Zika Ruski. Okay. So we just filled um, four bottles, four more bottles up from the toilet uh, of murky water. And let's search the sink. Okay. And then we filled a few more up from that sink. Is there a zombie in here? Because this would be a perfect place for us to... Well, except for we'd have to use our knife. We don't even have a club yet. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's one in here or not. And we're not using the gun because that's going to wake the dead, quite literally. Guess we didn't look in here, did we? Oh, nice. We got some rope. Uh, the brass, of course, will come in handy at some point, but it's not a high priority right now. Okay, well, let's see. How are we doing on iron? We're, we're not quite there. Let's see if we can take this apart. Shit ton of noise, doesn't it? Okay, so that zombo is either directly above us or on the other side of this wall. 
She's on the other side of the wall. I think. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's uh, concrete. All right, well, that's going to take her a little while to break through. When she does, we'll knife her. If that's the only sleeper we got to contend with, we'll, we're doing pretty good at the moment. Oh, shoot. I got one stone left. That's not good. Uh, okay, let's repair. Should have probably brought a little more stone in here with me. We can also scrap one of these. So that'll give us... Oh, that'll give us 30 iron right there. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, let her do her thing. Um, How many nails do I have? 82. Yowzers. Okay, that's, uh, that's eight frames right there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here's what we're going to do then. We're going to... We're going to cheese this just a little bit. Let's pick that up. And um, we're going to see if... I'm going to see if I can block that door with the workstation. Um, all right, so let's see. We, we need to, uh, to make the table, uh, which is the carpenter's table, we need a log table, six branches, which we have, two things of wood, which we have, and then 30 iron. So let's make the log table first. And then once we make that, then we have all the other stuff to make the carpenter's table. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can block this doorway with it. Um, and that will give us a little bit of security, uh, at least, you know, temporarily. Are you done? Here, let's just break on through so we can kill you. Okay, so the log table's done. Now let's craft the carpenter table. I'm going to let... I'm not going to wear my axe out. I'm going to let her break this all the way. Okay. What the hell? He must be up above. Okay, we got a bleed effect on her. Um, you can see the blood squirting out, and you can see her health bar go down, which is really nice. So let's save the durability on our knife and let the bleeding take her down. I don't know if it's going to kill her, but it's going to take her way down. Come on, bleed out, Nash Nancy. Okay, we're going to have to hit her once more. Okay, now, what the hell is going on over here? Same thing? Yep, same thing. Okay, well, we'll kill him, too, once he breaks through. All right, let's go over here and grab our workbench. Now, hopefully we can fit it over here. It's pretty big. Oh, man. Okay, can we fit it this way? I wonder if these pictures are in the way. Okay, yeah, we'll have to put it that way. Can we still get in here? Well, if we can't, we'll worry about that later. So can we get this guy to come over to this area here? Yeah, since we already got a hole here. Breakthrough, dummy. Oh, hey, look at this. Another cooking pot. And empty plastic bottles, which we will take and fill up. I guess I don't have to put those on my toolbar, so we can do uh, two more. Wait, what? There we go. Can we reach that toilet? Can't quite get to it. All right, so... While we're waiting for him to do his thing, what we want to do now is we want to go to our, our workbench here, and uh, we need to craft the wooden club. So to make a wooden club, we need uh, three things of rope and one log, and we have uh, one thing of rope, so let's make two more. That requires a resin and plant fibers. And then um, after that, we're going to need to make a bunch of wooden planks in order to make the wood frames. Come on, dummy. Get through here. I have nothing nothing else I can do. I'm not going to fire my weapon, my gun, because it's the only one I got. only have 10 rounds at the moment, and we need to save that for emergency situations. And trust me, there's going to be plenty of those. 
What we can do with these cupboards uh, that are intact is we can use them uh, as storage. We don't need the chairs now, so we can scrap those. Um, so let's just put a few things in storage. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna scrap another one of those. We need to go get some stone in order to make a campfire too. Um, you know, we probably don't actually need the trash with all these cupboards. Tell you what, though, since we have it, let's just go ahead and put it down anyway. Um, I don't know. We'll set it right up here. There. So we can also store a few things in here. Not a lot, but a few things. Okay, so old cash, because we have no trader on this map, is 110% completely useless to us. Other than we can scrap it for... Uh, oh, we can't even scrap it. Why can't we scrap it? What the hell, man? We should be able to scrap that. Okay, um, apparently we can't. So when we come across old cash, I guess it's going on the ground. Hmm, that sucks. Are you done yet? Get over here. It's getting close. Okay, so we got our ropes. Now we can finally craft an actual weapon. I mean, the knife is actually a, a decent weapon, too, for very early in the game, but it's, um, look at that bleed effect. You go. You go, boy. You bleed on out on us. Well, now we got our club. Okay, so let's grab that and put that in our number one slot, and then we can just conk this guy. He's still bleeding, though. with him um now next thing I thought I heard another Z okay next thing we need to do um, is it wants us to make a bow which we will do of course but let's get the frames made first so in order to do that we have to have wooden planks um, does it cue those for us oh uh, did we already have the wind planks? I don't know if it cues stuff or not. Let's take a look for the ne for the next one. I don't think it does because this is now grayed out. So we have to make the other thing first. Which again, it's not as convenient, but it is realistic. Oh, look at that. Our first wood frame. Okay. We get byproduct, you know, from making wood planks, uh, at which we can use for other things uh, like firewood, for example. Um, now, we need five planks for each wood frame. So what I want to do is I don't want to use all of our wood up. Let's take... Can we store stuff in here? Yeah, we can. Because um, I don't think it'll use this. Okay, so let's make... Um, that's two more. Plus the four that we have. Okay, so we'll craft all that, but we still have these seven chunks of wood afterwards. While we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and offload some more stuff here. Um, we're going to use all this for, like, firewood later. Uh, we want to keep things with us that uh, are useful right at the moment. We do have to watch our weight down here, too. Let's put that in there. Uh, we'll put the crap... Uh, the, the crap, yeah. Well, it is kind of crap. The scrap chest armor in there for now. Uh, we probably won't be using that anytime soon. Can we make normal straight up bandages in our own inventory we can okay we've got two here so it's good to know that we can do that what about the the bandana can we make that recipes we need a tailoring station okay yep so no more crafting clothes on the fly man not gonna happen i'm not worried, really worried about organizing anything we will most likely spend the night here and then i can worry about that uh overnight uh so i'll put the data stuff there uh, the brass candlestick how are we doing on food and water? Oh, by the way, the, the UI of this is really nice, too. Um, it's it's shown us, you know, what time of day it is over here. we got the little elemental protection buff, and we can see food and water, stamina, that sort of thing. Uh, really nice. This is the durability of the tool that we're currently um, holding on to. Okay, I think everything else... We'll keep the cooking pot in here until we can make the, uh, the campfire. Everything else we're going to hang on to. Uh, we'll put the yucky water in there. 
and uh, we need to find an, another source of water too at some point. But I think we'll, yeah, let's keep those with us in case we we come across it. Uh, now we can sort by weight, we can sort by value, uh, by type, or by name. Um, and I like to use the weight option at least in my own inventory because that's a thing now. All right, where are we at with this? Um, we got 14 planks. That's 18. If we do um, just one more plank, then that'll allow us to make um, five more frames. So, you know, you need a minimum of two frames to, to get up the side of a building. But it's always good to have more uh, because, you know, if they break or whatever. Excellent. So now we should be able to make four more of these. And uh, we still have 34 more nails. Uh, you know what? We, we need nails for doors, too. We need two hinges and 18 nails and 10 planks. So we could almost make a door for that. Not that it matters now, because we're not picking this thing back up anytime soon. <laughs> um, still might not hurt to put a door there at some point. All right. So um, now the next thing we need to do is we need to go get some stones for a campfire and also for the bow. It looks like we have everything else to finish the quest so we can get our four points. Uh, I don't think we need to bring the nails with us, so let's keep those in here. And we don't really need that either, so let's... We'll take everything else with us. Okay, let's go get some stone. Oh, let's grab our frames. finally have some frames that took a while man it's not like the vanilla game is it okay so remember we're still playing on insane nightmares so we can't just go out and mix it up with disease of course there's one right there where we need to get out Just wait for a moment and see if they bugger off. And then we got to get a bunch of stone. You know what? I think there's a swimming pool. Yeah, there's a pool right behind that house, so we can use that to get the rest of the water we need. But there's also sleepers in there, so we're going to have to be really careful. Will you go away? I don't have any stones on me to throw to get rid of them. I'm just going to leave these two frames here so we can get back up here really quickly in a hurry if we're in a hurry. Uh, I guess we need three frames, don't we? That leaves us two more in case we need to shimmy up the side of a different building to get something or whatever. Okay, what time is it? It is, it is 14.37, so um, we, have, we still have some time. Uh, we need stones to get rid of zombos, too. So we really need stones. So let's start looking for those. If we can get over uh, to that boulder over there, um, that would be ideal. But last time we went that way, we had a bunch of sleepies. There's a boulder there, but we had cheerleaders up against the wall. This one might be a safer bet, maybe. Man, there's so many cool POIs to check out. Really looking forward to it. Okay, I think we're good to go here. So I'm going to sit here and whack on this stone. Okay, so we have 110 stone, which is pretty good. Plus, we made our our campfire as well. We've got a nurse Nancy there and a business guy there fairly close to us, so we have to keep an eye on them. There's a little girl zombie. 
All three of those are super fast on in, on uh, nightmare speed, so we want to avoid them if possible. Man, that's a big old tall building, isn't it? Let's keep an eye on Nurse Nancy and get some more stuff out of here. We could check the dumpsters. <coughs> Excuse me, they're going to make a lot of noise, though. Let's get Nurse Nancy a little further away from us. Business guy. I don't even know where the hell he went. Where's Arlene at? Okay, I don't see anybody right around the corner. So I think we're safe to to check these two dumpsters. Nothing in it. Okay, we'll scrap that and take the rope. Alrighty. So, before we go back, um, I want to... What's this? Seeds, basics, workstations. Does it not? Okay, it does. Okay. So we need a bowstring, and that requires resin. We've got 26 resin. Oh, we're going to need plant fibers because we need to make two of these. One to make the bow, and then you uh, have to have another bowstring to repair the bow instead of just using wood like vanilla. Let's get a little bit more plant fiber. We've got to keep an eye on Hawaii 5. Oh, shit, there's Nurse Nancy right there. Go away, you're a pest. You're a fast, scary pest. You're getting closer, too. And that rock got stuck right there. Okay, we got him out of the way. Let's check uh, the trash here. I uh, don't think we need any of that stuff right now. I want to get a little bit more plant fiber before we head back. Uh, we're not going to be able to spend the night in there because uh, the horde could break through the front door. So we might have to just perch up perch up on the roof for the first night. We'll see how things go, though. Because as you can see, there's no way I could possibly defend against the horde <laughs> at this point. This progression is takes so much longer to do everything, but that, I'm okay with that. I am fine with that because it's fun. It makes sense. It's more realistic. Etc. Etc. Okay, so let's grab a little bit more. We're close enough to where we can escape up our thing here. If we have to. So let's get some more plant fiber so we can get our bow made. And then we're going to focus on making a shit ton of arrows next. And we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have the four skill points that we can spend too, which we're going to be definitely focusing on stealth. This is an interesting little POI. I wonder if uh, that's something we might be able to spend the first horde night on the roof. I don't know. We'll see. Take a look at it. Oh, there's, that's the Eden Mall. Okay, cool. That's another Eden Mall. There's all kinds of Eden Malls. That's a compo pack for you. The nice thing about the compo pack is, you know, we're going to we're gonna see a lot of repeat just hit him in the head. We're going to see a lot of repeat POIs, but it just, it makes the world feel, you know, more populated. And it's just, it's fun. And, you know, I can anticipate that, you know, we have so much that we can explore. So that's what this playthrough is about, man. We're not going to, we're not going to be doing any massive builds. We're not going to be staying in one place for the whole time. Um, we are going to have fun and check things out. That door is unlocked. Are there nasties in here? Oh, there are. Let's get them a little further away from us. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. A jack-o'-lantern. That's the pawn shop, okay. Is there something in here? Oh, look at that. How much space is in that? There's quite a few spaces in that. 
There's one on that side too. I don't suppose it's something we can break and then pick up. Oh, I set the roads to be overgrown looking too because I thought that was more appropriate for the apocalypse. So it's going to probably suck when we finally get our first vehicle, but it is what it is. Let's just take a quick peek. I hope he can't jump up there and come out. All right, well, we've got everything we need. Let's get the, the quest finished here. We need to find some candles, too. Um, can we make torches in our own inventory? Yeah, but we need oil. Oil for that. Okay. Um, all right. So, let's go here. I'm going to put this in the kitchen for now. Up on top of the stove. And we can put our cooking pot in there now you can't put normal logs oh never mind you can I thought you couldn't hmm. okay um, but I think you can put I mean we got firewood here and then we got scrap wood and broken planks and bark let's just take a quick look at what these are used for so this is recipes for charcoal sticks Scrap wood and burning barrels. This is used for fuel bricks. Oh, neat. Okay. Crafted in carpenter's table tier three. Wood planks and we can make paper. Nice. Okay. And what is this used for? That's just used to turn it into planks. Okay. Well, let's put the firewood in here. And uh, we've got... So this stuff is in plastic bottles. What does it say for recipes? Fresh water crafted in a campfire. Okay. Um. Do we have to have a skill of some sort to do that? Do we just have to turn this on? Oh, a drink. Okay. Gotcha. Um, let's make some fresh water to drink. Nice. Okay, so so we're not going to question how exactly we're boiling dirty water in a plastic bottle over a campfire. We're just going to take that one on faith. <laughs> uh, okay, what do we got to do? Uh, we got to craft a, bro a bowstring. So let's do that first. Must be like fire retardant plastic or something. We're going to have to do some hunting here pretty soon, too. Um, we have just enough hinges to actually make a door. Maybe we should do that. Um, what do we need? We need 10 planks and 18 nails. Okay, well, we'll finish our quest first, and then we'll worry about that. Okay, now let's craft the bow. It'll take 20 seconds. Let's harvest these, because we can get nails and other stuff from them. Um, we can harvest the bed. Get a little scrap iron from that, too. Add some planks. That just gave us scrap wood. Uh, okay, so now we need to craft some sticks. 
How many can we do? 63. Uh, well, let's just do... Let's just do one to finish the quest, but then we'll make more. Here's our shitty bow. Yeah, we're going to have to start getting up on a roof here pretty soon. Okay, so we got that, and then craft an arrow. That doesn't take too long. All right. Um, this is basically just the message at the end of the quest. Um, notice it says there's no trader because I don't have a trader on the map, but we do have our four points. So we're going to go to uh, missions, and we're going to just delete that quest because that's the only question we're going to do in this whole entire playthrough. Okay, so we have four points to spend. What time is it? It's 18. Yeah, we, we have like four hours. Um, we're probably... What I'm going to do is... Let's make another bowstring because we're going to need one for repairing our bow. Let's make another rope because we're going to need one for repairing... Oh, we already have a rope. Our club. And then I'm going to just craft a whole crap ton of arrows. Um, we have, well, I guess 14 arrows is all we're going to actually make. So that's iron arrow. Oh, wait. What are we short on? We got 14 feather. Oh, we got to make the sticks first. That's right. Okay. So let's make 14 of these. And then once those are made, we can come back and make the uh, rest of the arrows. So for now, we're just going to put this stuff in here. Put the nails, uh, the hinges, the iron... Guess that can go in there. Uh, we never got to that pool, but that's okay. We'll we'll worry about that in the morning. Well, but we have uh, this water here. Let's drink this now. And we'll just keep that jar in there. And then let's grab our clean water out of here. And don't we have a chili? Yeah. We have a chili and we have a beef ration. So that's going to have to get us by for now. And then tomorrow uh, we'll do some hunting. We'll go kill some chickens. Uh, so let's eat the chili. I might hang on to that and use that in the morning. Okay, so scrap that. What time is it? Yeah, we still have a little bit of time left. Let's put about half of the wood in here, too. Can get started on arrows. All right, well, we have got to get on a roof somewhere. Um... I mean, we could probably inch our way up to the top of this roof, but I'm thinking maybe we see if we can just get on top of the, um, on that roof there. I don't know if there's a way for Zombos to get up there, though, so um, we'll go take a quick look while we're waiting for the rest of these arrows to uh, craft here. At least the arrows don't take a long time. Okay. Let's go check out that roof. And if it doesn't look feasible, I mean, if nothing else, we can just get up on all the way up on top of the apartment roof. Because there's no zombos up there. At least there usually isn't. Nobody in the immediate vicinity. I know there's a way to get on that up on that roof with that ladder, so we can't use that house. The other thing is we might run into vultures or sleepers up on this roof too. 
Neither one of those would be desirable. Clear, of, of course. Um, doggone it. I mean, I guess we could we have arrows and we got our club. If he infects us, though, that's gonna suck. Um, all right, well, yeah, I think this is. I mean, I don't see any way for Zombos to get up here, so let's see if we can kill this guy and um take this roof over for our first horde night okay don't think there's anything in these tree branches here so all right guys well i think this is where, where we're going to spend our first horde night Harvest this guy, get some bones. We, we can't even make bone shivs in our inventory. We have to use the carpenter's bench for that, too. Okay, is this used for something other than the usual? Farm plots, sham, port bite. Okay, so it looks like it's the usual, but, you know, we do want to... We'll probably, when we set up our more or less permanent base, you know, where we're going to have all our crafting stations and stuff, we'll probably at that point do some farm plots too. Okay, well, let's let's talk about um, the plan for tomorrow. Uh, so when, when the morning comes, what we need to do is we need to go hunting because we need food. And I want to get more, uh, I want to make a bunch of arrows. So we have, uh, you know, arrows, of course. Um, so we'll gather up the stuff that we need for that. Probably cut another tree or two down just so we have a good supply of wood. And then after that, I think we'll be ready to start uh, doing doing some exploration. You know, trying some of the, you know, some of the POIs out. It's going to be really dangerous early on, but um, you know, we'll make it. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Oh, the other thing I can't do is I can't make a land claim block in my own inventory. That requires a, a special workstation too. So that that option's out. <laughs> like we might like we might be able to do, you know, with a, a vanilla series. Uh, we, oh, we got to do our points, don't we? Uh, so we got four points here. So the, the basically the perks menu is it, it looks different, but as far as I can tell, it's pretty much the same thing as vanilla. Um, so what we want to do is we want a shadow fox. Um, so we have to first take the first point in agility uh, to unlock that, okay? And then that way we can take Shadow Fox, and then, you know, I think this, the actual things that it does, hide in the shadows 30% more effectively, actions are 10% less noisy, crouch 10% faster, enemies will search for you up to 50 seconds. Um, I think that's the same as vanilla as far as I know. Okay, so that gives us that. Now, we could... I really want to focus on the agility tree. Um, I'm not too terribly worried about vehicles for now um, we'll eventually try them out because they're really cool in this mod but that's going to definitely be you know a mid to late game thing it's not something we're going to try and um you know fast track like we typically would do uh in a normal playthrough uh so so we want to focus on agility but we also need to consider strength because um you know club is really our only melee weapon that we currently have and um you know, there's going to be other other things in here. Oh, sexy T too, uh, definitely going to come in useful. And then the one for uh, where's the cardio? Yeah, that one we might want to think about putting some points into that too. Unfortunately, it's in the agility tree just because of the fact that we're probably <laughs> we're probably going to have to do some running, especially here in the early game. So. That would, you know, the problem with this though is in the late game, you know, when you have weapons and you're all armored, 
these points are kind of wasted. But then I, oh shit, you know what? We're not going to be able to do a respec, are we? Because we don't have a trader. I didn't even think about that. Can we make, um, what's it called? Forget an elixir? Uh, seeds. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to really... Yeah, I don't think we can make forget an elixir. All right, we're going to have to really be careful with our points because whatever whatever we take, that's what we got. Didn't even consider that part of things when we when I decided not to use the trader. <laughs> oh, man, it can't take me anywhere. That's okay. That's okay. That's what, we're not focused on traders and that kind of thing in this playthrough. We're on our own. So, yep, whatever points we take, that's what we get. So that being said, you know... I don't know. I don't know if I want to put points into this. Um, I'm just not sure if I want to do that. Um, so let's do this. Let's put a point into strength and let's put a point into pummel peat here again because that's the weapon we currently have. And then, um, I mean, we might just do sexy T. There, there's we we need we should do this anyways because it's going to help with mining and stuff, and we can do more get more power attacks off. So yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see, but. The you know, point being that we're going to have to really think about our points, you know, because we're not going to be able to change them later on. So uh, this collectibles, this is just, you know, the usual, just in a little bit different menu configuration. Looks really nice, though. All right, guys. Well, let me look at one more thing here. So we are quite a, we're a little ways to the east and just a little bit to the south on this map. So I'm just trying to get an idea uh, you know, of where we're at. So, okay. That's interesting. Well, uh, what I'm going to do is cut the camera here and wait till the Horde Knight actually starts just so you can kind of see the very start of it. But then it's really just going to be me sitting on this roof, pretty much doing nothing for the whole damn Horde Knight. Um, I, cause there's not really anything I can do to craft. Um, and you know, just the way it is. So I'll probably put audible on and just listen to a book or watch somebody else's video while I'm waiting <laughs> for the night to, to pass. Um, this is the this is the first time in a long time though that I ha have not been able to go out at night because usually I just go out at night and say screw it. But uh, not going to happen this time, and that's that's by design. The, the important thing is as we you know as we progress through this playthrough, I need to try as best as I can to have things that I can do at night, you know, crafting and whatnot, so we're productive. Uh, mining that sort of thing but um obviously we can't do that right now just because we're pretty much pretty you know limited to what we can do anyway i'll bring you back when the horde night starts all right guys it is horde night the first night uh, we have uh the horde set to eight zombos and um again the purpose of that is just so that we can't go out and do whatever the hell we want to at nighttime, more than trying to kill eight zombies on Horde Night. Oh, you know what? I wonder if our game stages are too low to send a horde after us. Uh, let's look at that. This is different. Yeah, we're only game stage one. Ah, all right. I think you have to be at least five, maybe even ten, before you start getting hordes. I remember that when I used to play uh, Horde every night. Okay, well, that's uh, that's interesting. That changes things. Uh, so that means we can actually go do a few things. But uh, we need to wrap this episode up, though, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys off here. And we'll probably just pick up uh, right where we left off in the next episode since we can go out and do some things. Um, and, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.